Today in the bunker, we're going to talk about using model railroad scenics for your post-apocalyptic table. So one of the ways you can get some really, really nice looking buildings for your table is to sort of recycle model railroad terrain. And a lot of times these buildings can be found fairly inexpensively. Uh, if you can avoid buying them new, I would. These kits run eh, probably about $30, so if it's something you really want, it's not unquestionable that you would buy it. I've done it a couple of times just because it was something I really, really wanted to have and I couldn't find a used one. But if you have access to used buildings, and those can be found sometimes at model railroad shows or even local shops, uh, I would suggest buying those. You can get those fairly cheap, especially because they're already generally damaged. Sometimes they're put together, and you got to watch out there because sometimes the roofs are glued on. Some of these are, you can see where that took a little damage getting it off. Generally not a deal breaker. A lot of times it's glued on with kind of crappy glue, so you can just wiggle it a bit and make it go. They're a little damaged, uh, not really a big deal, especially for something you're going to use for apocalyptic terrain anyway, uh, or any sort of abandoned or war-torn place, although they're sort of limited in that regard because most of these buildings are very 1950s America. The exception to that being if you're, especially if you're overseas, you can find a lot of really neat European stuff, but I think even that is uh, mostly of an older type. But depending on what period you're doing, works great. But don't be put off by their unpainted appearance. These generally look fairly dreadful when they're straight out of the box. But they're really some nice sculpts. I was kind of surprised. Once I got some paint on this, and I believe I have a picture I'll add in of this before it was painted. It, it looked terrible. And a little bit of paint, and it really starts to shine. Although it's dull, but you, you know what I mean. A neat thing about some of the detailing, these windows actually come out on a lot of these models. The ones in the back are generally molded in, but anything that's on the sides or the front is, is actually will come out. You snap them in. And you can take, if you're very careful, you can take a very sharp hobby knife and get in on that seam where the shutter is on the front and on the back and very carefully score that and eventually it will come off and not really damage the window frame. So you can make your shutters loose or in one of the buildings you'll see uh, there's a spot where I took it off completely and just laid it down like it fell off. Okay, and here is that particular window I was talking about a moment ago. The, um, and I apologize for the flock all over this, I haven't sealed this yet. But uh, you can take it and just like it fell off. Somebody forced entrance in there. This particular one, I add a little bit of detailing on it, trying to go for that metal clad look. I don't know that I really achieved it, but it's rusty and it's a bright color. And it kind of evokes that whole 1950s aesthetic. So they're particularly suited to Fallout. They work really good for that. Most of my buildings are Plasticville. Few of them are K-Line, Bachman, which I believe does plastic fill now, but there's several of these that are use common parts for the plastic fill, like this is the fire station. The main portion of the building, except for the front, is also a police station, and maybe one or two other things. They're pretty forgiving for scratch builds, or modifications, rather, like you put in some screen, you can either leave the original doors in, or I added a door here. I made a set of these that slide in in place of the originals. So if you want your fire engine building to be a little more up-armored, 
you can. Say a raider gang was using it as their headquarters or whatever. And you can do things like cover over the windows and just generally make them look a little scrappy. One of the things you got to watch out for is the plastic may be bent in a little bit, which if you were gluing the, the roof on it wouldn't be a big deal. But since we want that to come on and off, I just took a piece of dowel rod and cut it to fit so that it held the walls at the correct angle so I could put the roof on with no trouble in case you want to put figures in there or whatever. I try to make everything, all my buildings, so you can at least put figures in them. They don't have any detailed interiors yet. Some of them probably never will. But they're handy, so if you want to stage your bad guys or good guys in there or whatever, you can. A number of the buildings as they come out of the box are not really all that useful in general. One of them being the Suburban Station, and this that's what this started life as. Although this one came in a, a lot that I bought of used buildings. I'll get to that in a minute. It was missing a couple of the doors. Of course, this thing sets several inches up. It's supposed to have a, a platform, which I'll reuse that for something else. But I just took and added some chipboard detailing over the gap that was there. You can kind of see it down in there, maybe. My camera work could be any worse. I also scratch built a couple of the doors using the same mat board I use as the base. And you'll notice that this building does not have the same sort of basing as the others. That's because it's a commercial building. It's meant to go more in town. All of my houses are supposed to have a yard, so that's why I included that. This should be sitting on a parking lot or butted right up next to the road, that type of thing. I did the same thing with the, the fire company building. I sort of did a hybrid because it doesn't have a base right in the front, so it can sit on a parking lot or next to the road and look okay, but it still has, this could be off in the wilderness a little bit and be fine. And there's no real wrong way to do that. But these buildings do lend themselves. They're, they're, the plastic can be a little brittle because honestly, some of these buildings you buy were literally made in the 1950s. So you kind of have to be careful there, but it does cut fairly easily and it goes together, glues together well. I just scratch built a roof out of some foam core. And the detailing on them is very nice, I think, in general. Especially once you put a little paint on there, a little bit of dry brushing really stands out. So that'll be some sort of commercial building. Another thing you can make are diners. There's all sorts of different, there's probably three or four at least different sets of diners that uh, you can get. I added some signage to it. And it's kind of funny, this was a sort of an inside joke. And then come to find out there actually is a chain of places called the Waffle Hut. So, great minds think alike. Not really sure there. I don't know that I have a great mind. But in any case, it, uh, it looks great on the table. I put some scrapbooking paper in there as a floor covering and just I left the windows on when I sealed it so it gave it a nice dirty frosted appearance uh, you could make broken windows you can leave the windows out entirely it's just up to you this is the I think it's the one of the Cape Cod cottage set and if you just board over things just make it look a little dirty. It really fits the part. This had a chimney. It didn't come with it. It's one of my used buildings. Uh, the roof is in two parts, but I left it because it works. It's, it's pretty secure and snug. But these are some, like I said, they're really, really decent houses. 
There's one. I had a little bit of difficulty getting that part off and it cracked so I put a little bit of strengthener on there. But once it's put down you really can't see. Plus post-apocalyptic's a little bit of damage. Some of these, the next few I do, I'll probably have some holes in the roof, some rafter showing. A little more damage like you'd expect. But what about scale, I can hear you asking. Well, these are intended for, I'm using them for fallout, which is nominally 32 millimeter. But anything for the 28, 32 millimeter stuff works fine. These are O and sometimes S gauge. I think S is technically the really the closer, but O works fine. I mean, you, you can see your figures on there, they look great. They're not horribly out of scale. If they're in the building, generally they can look out the windows. If you can see a uh, crappy camera shot there. And if you do uh, 20 millimeter, then the, or even 15, then the HO scale stuff tends to work depending on how you're basing, but it can be made to work. I've, I've used it with great success. I have an entire HO scale town I use for a zombie game with 20 millimeter figures. Although now I need to go back and paint it like this stuff is painted because this looks 10 times better. But I would encourage you to um, check out Model Railroad shows, if there's any in your area, check out uh, Model Railroad stores, although those are becoming, sadly, increasingly rare. I would say check out eBay, but a lot of folks are wise to these, so some of these kits go for stupid money. And you may be reduced to just buying a brand new kit and working with that. But even then, it's depending on where you find them, they're 25, 30 bucks. And considering what you're getting, it's not bad, especially compared to some of the other kits that are out there that are sort of plain. These have a lot of detail, so something to definitely look at. It, you can make a really, really nice looking table with these. Now that box I referred to earlier of, of all those buildings, I got that at the, the last model railroad show I went to. And went to the guy's table. He had that banker's box full of just a, a jumble of absolutely filthy pieces of buildings. Just a, a complete shambles. And I got the whole thing for a steal. And I, when I got home and washed it off, you know, I said, even if these buildings are complete, I can use the pieces to scratch build other things. Out of that box, I got about a dozen complete or fairly complete buildings and it's missing some details chimneys that sort of thing no big deal I can scratch that uh, it's easy enough to scratch build but um, really a fantastic deal for the kind of thing that we're doing not so great for somebody who was maybe doing an actual model railroad setup which is why it was so cheap so I encourage you, if you have those type of shows or even haunt flea markets, but especially if you have a great uh, train store, like I have one locally that's fantastic. He has loads and loads of used stuff as well as brand new things. So I try to swing by there every so often because you never know what you'll find. He's got some fantastic bits of kit. But again, I encourage you to try model railroad stuff for your tabletop. Um, it really does look great once it's painted, and generally it's fairly inexpensive. So I hope that helps, guys. Thanks for watching.